Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. I'm joined today by Sneed. I'm Dean Anderson from the St. Albert Church of Christ. Uh, Sneed's going to be joining us for a second for a little bit of a demonstration. Um, so hopefully you can sit patiently and wait while I uh, read some jokes. Uh, the whole idea of this study is to have some discussion through the Facebook comments. So I'm waiting for people to show up live. So while I do that, I'm going to read a few jokes. People seem to like the jokes. So let's see how this goes. Let's need sniffing my hands as I go. Okay, I didn't understand this one the last time. Last week I read this and I put it off to the side, but I think I get it now. So we'll see if you guys get it too. So what's E.T. short for? Because he's got tiny legs. You get it? If you come in and you see that or hear that joke and you get it, let me know in the comments because I didn't get it at first. So Kristen's here. Hello. There's a few others, I think. Why was Cinderella thrown off the basketball team? She ran away from the ball. Mm -hmm. Okay. What did the grape do when he got stepped on? He let out a little wine. It's neat over here. Hey, you gotta come over this way. Yeah, come over this way. Sneed likes to explore. We actually weighed him the other day and he's almost three pounds. <clears throat> it's kind of crazy. It's a big animal. Big animal for a little animal. Oh, there's Gail. Hello, Gail. What did the, what did the shy pebble wish for? That he was a little bolder. It's not shy anymore. It's bolder. I guess it's worse if I explain the joke, right? Okay, I'll maybe do one or two more, but I think that might be everybody that's going to be able to come on to the show tonight. My son handed me my 50th birthday card. It's actually applicable. I think, I think I'm 50 next year. I said one would have, or I said one would have been good enough. <laughs> All right, let's leave it at that. Uh, the clerks are here. Oh, Tina got it. She understood. That's good. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do a bit of a demonstration with Sneed here. been very... Well behaved, Sneed. Nice work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give Sneed, get rid of this grass. I'm going to give Sneed a little treat. So these are little treats that he really likes. You got a treat, Sneed? You want it? I know you're nervous. You want the treat though, right? Okay. I'm trying to get him over here so he can eat the treat while you see him. Maybe I'll just rotate this uh, blanket here. <clears throat> okay. So what I'm going to try to do with Sneed is I have this piece of lettuce, which Sneed really enjoys as well. We're gonna see what he likes more before he finishes the treat. So Sneed, you interested in this more? You see that on the, on the thing? Oh, there we go, go over here. See, he's not distracted at all. He doesn't care about the lettuce at all. Okay, the only reason he took that at that time is because he finished his treat. I could hear him chewing it and he finished it. So now he's having the lettuce. Oh, maybe not, maybe not. Maybe he's still eating the treat. So he got a little bit distracted, but he's pretty focused on his treat. I think maybe because I stuck it right in front of his face. He's like pulling it so he can have it close to him and now he can eat it. So, so he was pretty focused on his treat. He didn't get distracted by the lettuce very much. So it was a bit of a, de a demonstration. I'm going to pass Sneed off. We'll put him back kind of on the little blanket here so he doesn't lose his spot. And he can enjoy his lettuce in his cage. Hey, pig. Get him gathered up. There we go. Pass him off. There we go, safe and sound. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna tilt this up a little bit. And I'm going to move this over. I got something to look at. So we saw Sneed, he had his treat and I tried to distract him with the lettuce and he actually stayed pretty uh, focused on his treat. He didn't tend to get distracted too much until I put the lettuce like right in front of his nose and then he got a bit distracted. But even then, uh, he, he grabbed it and put it down and just continued to eat his treat. So it appeared like the treat was more important to him uh, than the lettuce. And the idea here is uh, just a demonstration to show how we can be distracted as well. Uh, we can either be distracted or we can be a little bit more like Sneed where he was really focused on that treat and he didn't let the lettuce distract him too much. He was really uh, intent on finishing that treat before he went to the lettuce. And the same kind of thing can happen to us. Uh, there's definitely a difference. Uh, you know, the skinny pig is more driven by instinct and desire. Uh, 
we as people, we have will, we have the ability to choose what we want as our purpose. Uh, his true purpose at that time was to eat the treat. That was his drive for existence, I think, at that time. You know, I'm not sure what would have moved him off of that except for something that really scared him. But he was there, he was eating the treat, and he was ready for it. And us as people, we have that ability to use our will and our kind of cognitive abilities to choose what we find is important to us and choose our purpose which is our word of the week today, and either stay on track of that purpose, or we can also get distracted. Again, Sneed was a good example. He didn't get as distracted by the lettuce. You could see him kind of looking, but he still really wanted to eat the treat. So hopefully we can be more like him. If we have our purpose, we don't get easily distracted by those shiny things that, that might catch our eye and kind of move us off of track of our purpose. So my first question tonight, again, it's a study that I'm encouraging discussion through the comments in Facebook. Uh, write your responses in the comments as they show up. I'll read them off so we can kind of share our answers with everyone. My first question is what are some common distractions in life? I think that's something that's different for everyone, but we all can be distracted by certain things. Uh, if I look back or if I look at myself, uh, I work in an office. Uh, I work on, you know, engineering stuff. And I get a lot of emails during the day. There's always people asking questions or sending me things. Uh, so that's the nature of my work. I actually find that emails are very distracting. Uh, I've set it up on my computer where I don't get the little pop-up window on the bottom of the computer that shows I have an email. I turn that off. On my phone, my cell phone, I have it on the desk beside me. Uh, that's my primary phone. I turned off all notifications except for text messages. And if somebody actually phones me, and that's it. I don't have any other distractions on the phone, no sort of notifications from social media or this or that, um, because those can be very distracting. Uh, if I'm working and I see an email pop up, I instantly want to go see what that email is, what that's about. And if I'm really working on something, if I got my mind wrapped around a certain issue that I'm working on or a thing that I'm working on, and I stop and I go look at the email and assess what the email is about, even if I don't work on that email, I have to go back to my thing and it takes me a certain amount of time to get back into it. So it's a wasted amount of time. I'm distracted from my purpose. Uh, we got Joyce that says TV, computer games. Very good. Uh, Gail. Oh, she has a really good one. Family issues and TV. TV pops up again. Uh, Kristen has her phone, which again, that's what I was discussing too. My phone can be very distracting and continues to be. Uh, more so at the office than at home. Uh, at home, I tend to put it on the counter and I don't really look at it too much. I do look at it whenever I walk by, I tend to look at it, uh, but I usually don't carry it around and look at it that way. But at the office, it's like right there. And especially if I'm working something that's not very interesting, I'll look at my phone more often and I get distracted about it uh, with it more often than I probably should. Uh, I like Gail's response about, uh, about kids and family issues. Uh, some things happen at home that can be very distracting. And, and even if it might be a, an issue that you're really thinking about, something that's important to your family or important to your kids, maybe it's an issue you're dealing with, that can stick with you throughout your workday, uh, throughout other parts of your life, really occupy your mind and be distracting. Uh, you know, these might be important distractions, something that you do need to think about and it just occupies your mind, but it is a distraction nonetheless. Uh, in the time of COVID, uh, there's many people working from home. Uh, I've been kind of blessed where I'm the only one in my office. There's only three of us in there most of the time. Uh, the other two guys are working at home because they work further away from the office. So I'm the only guy that goes in the office. But I, I see how they are affected. We meet every morning on, online. Um, and I just talk about what's going on with uh, the things that we're working on. And, you know, you can see what's distracting. Uh, I worked with other and I talked to other people, uh, again, through these video calls. And I was talking to a guy, project manager, he was working on his table, you know, his kitchen table, and he had people running around. You could hear kids and animals, you know, running around all over the place. You know, it's one of those things that can be really distracting. If he's trying to do his job, but he's got all these family distractions around. So it's very, um, you know, can be a big distraction and can take you away from your purpose. His purpose at that point was to work on his work stuff, you know, try to stay on track with his, uh, you know, his duties and responsibilities with the office or with whatever he was working on. And, you know, those things can be distracting. Oh, we got Isaac with us. Hello, Isaac. Let's go to Philippians chapter two. You know, we have these common distractions in our life. Oh, the one thing I wanted to note as well, uh, there's a couple there that said TV. 
Uh, I find TV can be a distraction as well, but I find it interesting in the new generation. Um, the younger kids don't really watch TV. Like TV is not a big thing for them because they have their devices. They watch, you know, YouTube videos, other things, you know, they tend not to watch TV. And I just find that kind of interesting. Uh, Tina says, I think maybe just daily functioning like work, cleaning house, making meals, extracurricular activities, bath times and bedtimes. Uh, the evening is gone and maybe missed some important things. So yeah, just uh, the kind of to day-to-day -day chores, I guess, day-to-day -day responsibilities uh, can be a distraction. Uh, but then again, if that's your purpose, maybe that's your purpose and it's good that you're not being distracted from that, I guess, depends how you look at it. Philippians 2 verses one to four talks about our purpose as Christians. So we as Christians have a purpose. We have something that we are working towards, something that we have as a goal. And Philippians 2, verses 1 to 4 discusses that. So let's read that. Philippians 2, starting in verse 1. It says, Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. So in this passage, it tells us, uh, the, the audience here, Paul is writing to a group of Christians. So that's who he's talking to here. You're seeing this group of Christians, you as the body of Christ, uh, you are to be united in one purpose. And that's something that we are to do as Christians. We are to be united. We're to be kind of standing together to do what we should be doing, uh, fulfilling our purpose in Christ. And I like how this passage addresses a potential distraction. And it talks about this idea of selfishness. Uh, it says, do nothing out of selfish or empty conceit. Uh, different versions say selfish or vain conceit. Uh, and it talks about with humility or having the quality of humility and looking at one another as more important than yourselves. Uh, I also like how it doesn't say don't look after your own interests. It says, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also the interest of others. It really talks on that idea of balance. Uh, balancing isn't being distracted at times. We can still have purpose and do different things, different items, different tasks, and different responsibilities to fulfill. But these are things that we can, we can balance, and we have the ability to balance them. And the potential distraction here is where it starts to become selfishness. When you start to put your personal interests as being the governing thing in your life, and it starts to distract you from your purpose as a Christian. And that is a big issue. It's something that can really happen uh, as Christians. We can really uh, tend to focus on ourselves and put ourselves as number one uh, when that really shouldn't be. Uh, we do have worth and we do have purpose and we are to have our personal interests that we can fulfill but again, it has to have that balance. We have to make sure that it doesn't overtake us and be all-encompassing for us, because then it becomes a distraction from our true purpose as Christians. Uh, I like the idea in this passage, too, where it talks about this idea of selfishness and how it can distract you as a Christian yourself from your true purpose. But then in this passage, it discusses unity as well. If you start acting selfishly and start to disrupt the unity of the body, then you're actually being a distraction to the others as well. You're distracting yourself from your purpose as a Christian. You're distracting the other people in the body from their purpose as Christians as well. And, you know, that whole idea of infighting in a church can be very distracting. It can be something that really can throw congregations off the rails because they're, they're too busy uh, dealing with one another and, and fighting with one another uh, and get um, kind of drawn away from that purpose as Christians in serving God. So I've talked about purpose and being united in one purpose. What is our purpose as Christians? Uh, again, this is one of my kind of official questions, but if you want to respond, please feel free in the comments and I'll address it. But we're going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. This is always a verse that's kind of, uh, I don't know, sat well with me. I've, I've looked at this verse and I think about this verse fairly often. Uh, it's written by Solomon, the book of Ecclesiastes. And Solomon was a guy that was incredibly rich during his time and had access to basically anything he wanted. And throughout the whole book, he kind of debates. He kind of says, like, you know, is this the most important thing in your life? No, or in life in general. Is this thing the most important thing in life? And he talks about, you know, riches and 
uh, selfishness and achieving goals and all of these things, all of these things in Ecclesiastes. And he kind of boils it all down in the last couple of verses of Ecclesiastes, the book as a whole. So that's Ecclesiastes 12. And we're going to look at verse 13. So Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13. So again, Solomon, after he's debated all of these things that could encompass our life and be our purpose, uh, this is his conclusion. He says, now all has been heard. Here's the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. So there you go. I like how concise that is. Fear God, keep his commandments. This is the duty of all mankind. And again, if you read Ecclesiastes, you can see all of the different things he touches on as being potential uh, purposes of life, you know, essentially the meaning of life. And in order to stay true to our purpose, we have to know what that purpose is. And this is essentially what it boils down to. Uh, we have to understand that God is in charge. That's what's being talked about when it says fear God. We have to respect God. We have to understand that he is the guy in control. He is the God in control. Created everything, runs everything, is in control of everything. We have to understand that. We have to fear God. We have to respect him. We understand that. We respect that. And then out of that respect, we follow his commandments. We listen to what he has provided to us in the scriptures. We put those things to practice in our lives. Uh, this is what our purpose is. We are to serve God. Uh, if you go to Matthew 22, jump to the New Testament. Jesus worded the same thing a little bit differently and kind of threw a little bit of a, a different uh, spin on it, I guess, in a sense. It's, it's the same teaching, uh, but looks at it from a different angle as well, or puts another side to it, in a sense. So Matthew 22, we're going to read verses 37 to 40. So Matthew 22, starting verse 37. It says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So in this passage, Jesus is getting grilled by the Pharisees. They're sitting there asking him a bunch of questions, trying to trap him in his words. Uh, one guy asks, okay, what's the greatest commandment? And this is his response. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. That's the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, all the law and the prophets, so all of the old covenant, hang on these two commandments. And these two commandments carry through into the new covenant as well. And here again, it encompasses everything that we do. That first and greatest commandment really relates back to what Solomon said in Ecclesiastes. Fear God and keep his commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and your soul and your mind. Uh, this is that idea of true dedication to following God. We follow his commandments, but we don't just pay him lip, lip service. We're following him with our heart and our soul and our mind. We're choosing to follow him. And we are uh, fully as a whole following him. It's not just a, uh, an action thing. It's a heart-involved thing. We, we truly want to do this, and we do it with all of our heart, mind, and soul. The second kind of aspect that he touches on this deals with one another, the people that we interact with. Uh, we are to serve our fellow brethren. We are to love one another. Uh, we're also to serve those people, love the people that are around us that we just interact with. Uh, in this situation, somebody asks, okay, so who's my neighbor? He says, love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, okay, who's my neighbor? Who can I exclude from this list? Or who do I have to include into this list? And he basically says, everybody you interact with is your neighbor. Well, whoever you talk to, whoever you happen to have any sort of interaction with, you are to treat them well. You are to treat them with love. Uh, again, that involves, uh, you know, treating them in a good way and also not hiding the truth from them as well. Sometimes we think loving somebody is not telling them something uh, if they need to hear it, but we have to tell people what they need to hear at times as well, but we do it in a way that is a loving way, a gentle way. But these two things, loving God and loving your neighbor, really drives all that we do as Christians. This is our purpose. This is what we are to do when we're on this earth. Uh, we are to love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul. That includes following his commandments to the best of our ability uh, with all of our heart, mind, and soul, all of our desire. We are also to love one another. The people that we interact with, we are to treat in a good way. So my second question of the night, again, please answer in the comments, is more of a prevention question. So how can we make sure we keep from being distracted from our purpose as Christians. Uh, we looked at some of the distractions in life, some of the things that can kind of drag us away from what we really need to do. We see what we really need to do as Christians. We have to love God. We have to love our neighbor. That's what we have to do as Christians. So how can we keep 
from being distracted from our purpose as Christians? How, how can we keep getting drawn away? Uh, we saw earlier that selfishness can be one of those things that draws us away. You know, you start looking about what you want. That's going against loving God, going against loving your neighbor. A uh, good de definition of love that I mentioned before is active goodwill. Uh, that idea of looking to somebody else's interests is higher than your own and trying to serve them, trying to sacrifice something to help that person in some way or another. And again, that might be telling them the truth or telling them what they need to hear. So how can we keep from being distracted from that purpose? Uh, probably the first thing that pops, pops into my head, uh, I think Gail says it here, is focus on what Christ says. Uh, keep our eyes on what's important. Focus on what God says. Again, that distraction uh, can kind of drag us away. You know, you get caught, you're, you see something shiny over here, and you get kind of caught over to that direction. Keep focused on what is important. Focus on what Christ says. Um, study. Keep occupied with the correct things rather than being distracted with unimportant things. Um, yeah, Tina says we must make our purpose for God our top priority. Um, make sure that that's the number one thing that is in your mind at all times. It should affect all the decisions that you make in your life. Um, make the decision that this is what you want to do. Uh, be very deliberate that you want to do what God wants you to do. You want to love him. You want to love your neighbor. Be very deliberate about that. Um, this might be touching more about kind of what I do. So hopefully you can relate, but this really works for me. Uh, I tend to be busy a lot. Because I find that if I'm not busy, then that's when I start getting distracted by things. So I find it easier to stay kind of busy and focused on a certain thing and always keep that going. So then I don't get that, that distraction and, and kind of pulled away from what I really want to do. And one way that I do that is I make lists. I'm a list guy for sure. I got lists for just about everything. Um, so if you want to keep from being distracted from your purpose as a Christian, make a list. Uh, you can make a list of Bible readings. I was going to get it out, but I, I forgot before the lesson started. But uh, I know me and some other people are following a, a Bible reading list. So every day we have a certain uh, passage that we are to read. Uh, by the end of the year, which would be October 13th, it's kind of a weird day to start it, but that's when we started it. Um, we would have read the entire Old Testament and the New Testament twice throughout that year. And um, we've been doing this. I think this is our fifth or sixth year of doing this. But it's a list. It's a list of Bible readings. I check it off every day. Uh, sometimes I fall behind and I got to double up. Uh, sometimes I catch up and, and, you know, I might, you know, go on vacation and not do it a day or two, but I do it as a part of my life. It's something that I continue to do uh, as regular as I can, but it's a list. You have the list and you can check it off. Uh, you can make a list of things to pray for. Uh, the bulletin is a good way to do that. Uh, we have our local bulletin where we have some prayer requests. Pull that bulletin out and check off and make sure that you're praying for those, those people and those things in the prayer list. Uh, maybe make a list of who you can help. Try to brainstorm who can I help this week, this month, this year, and try to figure out the best way to do it. Make a list. Uh, list different ways you can serve. And again, it can be serving in the church. It could be serving in your community. It could be serving at your, your workplace, uh, at your school. How can I help other people? Uh, maybe make a list of ways that you can influence other people for the glory of God. How can I share with people? How can I help people? Uh, how can I react in a situation uh, that is repaying Maybe something that bad that happens to you, but you respond in a positive way. If you're deliberate about these things and you think about them and you make some lists possibly, it might not be writing it down, maybe it's a mental list, but if you do this and you're deliberate, you're going to be more likely to stay on track and stay on track with the purpose so that you don't get distracted, you know, by that shiny thing that's off to the side and you get pulled away. Um, yeah, Joyce says she likes the idea of lists as well and having what to have done by dates. So set a date of when you want to have that item in the list accomplished by. Uh, you have that date and it gives you a, a, something to work towards. I can relate to that one a lot because I have some things that I should be working on that I've had on my list for like three years, you know, at the office. So these things get pushed back if you don't put a date, if you don't put a deadline on it. You go to Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, we're going to read the first three verses. Uh, this is a really good passage on how to stay on track, how to stay focused on our purpose as Christians. Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 3. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, 
scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition for, from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. We have the perfect example in Jesus as uh, we read of his, his account in the New Testament. Um, he is there as our example. He, he went through everything that, that we might experience on this earth and more. And so we can learn from his example. Uh, I like in this passage where it says, remove the things that hinder. Here's where we have our distractions. Throw off everything that hinders. You know, we take these things that, that can pull us away and try to get rid of those things. And when we get rid of things, we do have to essentially replace it with something else. Again, as, as I can relate to, if, if I just put nothing on my schedule, that's where I tend to get distracted and, and, you know, kind of go wherever, you know, kind of my eyes take me in a sense. So I have to stay focused by keeping busy. So we remove the things that hinder, and then we run the race with perseverance. So that's being very deliberate. If you're running somewhere, you got to look at where you're going or else you're going to hit something. You know, when you're running, you got to run in a deliberate sense. You know where you're going, you're, you're navigating around those things that might hinder you, and we're doing it with perseverance. We're doing it with purpose and deliberation. Uh, we have to study the Bible. We have to make sure that we know what it says. We have to uh, make sure we understand how we are going to put this practice in our life, and then we have to carry it out. We have to run that race with perseverance. Uh, be deliberate in carrying out your plan. Uh, one way that you can really do that, if you find that you're kind of floundering, maybe you're kind of losing that sense of purpose. Okay, well, what do I do? Um, ask for help when you don't know what to do. Uh, that's something that I think a lot of people forget to do. They think they're all on their own when they're actually not. Uh, one way we can ask for help is through prayer. We can ask God for help. We can put these things on him and he can bless us with uh, instruction and wisdom on how to handle a certain situation. Another way we can ask for help is those people that we respect. Uh, those people that we're close to. Uh, there's people that you can reach out and ask for help to. Uh, if you don't feel you can share the issue that you're going through, maybe it's a very difficult thing that you're struggling with. Uh, there's a lot of things in our community, in our society that can help you out. You know, mental health lines. You know, there's lots of ways that you can reach out and look for help in those ways. But you have to take that step. Uh, carry out the plan. If you find that you're losing that purpose, uh, try to look for that way that you can stay back or get back on track. And most of all, look in the scriptures and look to Jesus' example and how he's handling situations, how some of the other accounts of the different people in the New Testament handle situations. Look at the Old Testament, see how they handle situations. And you can see and learn from those things and apply them in your life so that you don't lose that sense of purpose. You don't kind of get dragged off track of where you should be going as a Christian. So we do have that perfect example in the scripture in Jesus. Uh, don't get distracted by those shiny things. Uh, be like a sneed. Be like our little skinny pig here. Who, he ate that treat. He didn't get distracted by the shiny lettuce beside him. Uh, make sure that you use your time for doing important things. Uh, don't use all of your time doing unimportant, urgent things. Uh, that's one of those things when you're looking at coaching and business. Um, you know, we have these things that people are like, I need this right away. I need this right away. And you can spend all of your time doing those things that are, I need this right away. But if it's not really important, try to learn how to, to weed that stuff out and make sure you focus on what is truly important. Love God. Love your neighbor. Make sure that we do what we should be doing as Christians to fulfill our purpose in service to him. Be deliberate in study and action and the things that you do. Uh, you know, if necessary and if it works for you, make lists to stay on track. Make sure that you're busy. Make sure that you're busy doing your best to stay on track as a Christian in loving God and loving other people. Uh, it's nice when you say those things, but you have to try to find out how those things apply in your life. How are you going to love God? We're going to love God by studying the word, by carrying it out in our lives, by being strong in those situations when we do want to falter and go away from what is being taught in the scriptures. How do we love our neighbors? Uh, treat people nice. I know it's such a simple thing, but people forget. You know, when you're frustrated, when you have a tough day at work and you go to the store and they don't have the item in stock or maybe the cashier talked to you in a wrong way, do your best to still be nice. You know, be friendly to people, be compassionate to people. Um, these are ways that we can love our neighbor. Uh, try to help whenever you can. Uh, make it a deliberate thing. And when you do these things, we are serving our purpose as Christians. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us your word, uh, for giving us the sense of purpose in life in, in loving you and loving our, our neighbors, the people that we do interact with. I pray that we do stay on track, that we don't get distracted by the things that can be a distraction to us, that we stay true to our purpose in serving you. 
and that we could be very deliberate in that, that we can have the strength and the, the discipline to do that so we can run this race while we're on this earth with perseverance and in service to you. And I thank you so much uh, for giving us your son and for giving us your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, be safe, be well, and God bless.